Okay, so the Saturday before last uh, was the very first wildfire event, and it took place in Lexington, North Carolina, at the 34th Annual Barbecue Festival. Uh, Frank Carpenter went out with me, a brother that goes to my church, he's from China Grove, and a brother named William Lowe, who's one of my Facebook friends from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, came out as well. So it was just three of us, but it was definitely not a disaster. It's It was actually pretty awesome. Uh, we've seen healings happen and we were out there for three hours just going out and ministering to people and um, saw the Holy Spirit do a lot of unique powerful things. Uh, but I want to do a teaching also about highlighting. You know we hear people say believers sometimes uh, this person was highlighted to me by the Holy Spirit. So uh, maybe you've heard that before. Maybe you're a new believer or maybe you've been a believer for many years but you've never really uh, understood what that meant because there's a lot of different terminology in Christian lingo that goes lingo that goes around and people don't really sometimes uh, tell exactly what the definition of that is and, and they just feel that everybody knows what they're talking about so uh, when we talk about somebody being highlighted or it could be a person or it could be a place or a thing and this is what happened at the Lexington barbecue festival that we went to uh, so I want to talk about that uh, when we say somebody is highlighted in the spirit or uh, if there's like a place or a thing that's highlighted by the Holy Spirit, uh, the best way to describe it, I would say, is like, you know, those yellow markers, those highlighter markers that you use to highlight a Bible verse. You know, you, you find a special verse that's close to your heart that you that you want to uh, be able to find easily. There's the yellow, uh, yellow greenish highlighter marker, and you take that marker and you just go across the verse, and it highlights it. You know, for example, John chapter three verse sixteen: For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And you would highlight that, and it would stand out among the other scriptures. So when we go out and minister, uh, sometimes um, the Holy Spirit will highlight a person or a place or a thing to us. And it's it's not easy to describe in words. It's basically like, uh, just like bells and whistles go off in your spirit. Your spiritual eyes and ears just perk up. And the Holy Spirit will just, um, you'll be drawn to somebody to minister over all the other people. Just like the Bible verse and the Bible that you've highlighted. It's kind of highlighted over the others that's close to you and personal to you. So the Holy Spirit will do that. Um, it happened to me uh, back in the 90s when I used to do street ministry and I'd go out with some friends and we'd go, other brothers and sisters in Christ, we'd go to places in Baltimore City like the Red Light District and I'd be passing down tracks and just walking up and down the block and uh, the Holy Spirit would highlight somebody to me and they, he would say, that's the one I want you to talk to. And so I would talk to this person and I would feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit and I would just start telling them about Jesus and sharing with them my testimony. You know, the Bible says they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. So, uh, you know, uh, that was one instance. Another instance happened to me back in 1997. Uh, I was going to a church I was married at for about four years, a place called Full Gospel Temple and me and my wife Tabitha, and um, I was singing songs every week. I used to sing in church, and uh, every week I'd get like a new background tape, uh, accompaniment tape, and I would sing at the church using the tapes, and I would sing and have the background music. And so uh, one particular uh, weekend, I was at a Christian bookstore, Back in Baltimore area, uh, Dundalk, Maryland, where I'm from, a place called New Life Christian Bookstore, which was an East Point Mall that's no longer there anymore. But um, I remember going in the store and I was buying a book or something, and I can remember it was 1997, and I believe it was September, October, and uh, actually I believe it was October. And anyway, there was a rack of tapes, accompaniment tapes on the wall. And I just happened to be in line at the front of the cash register, and I can remember looking over at the tapes, and there was the song Awesome God by Rich Mullins. And there was just all these lights. I mean, literally, there was like flashes of lights going off in front of my eyes. And I remember um, that uh, these... I just felt led of the Holy Spirit to get that tape. God just said, get that tape right now and sing it at church. 
and I kind of put it off. And uh, the thing was, was uh, a week later, I find out that Rich Mullins died in a car accident the same week that God had tried to speak to me about getting that tape. And so uh, that's like a spiritual highlight, you know, that's, that was with a thing, right? And so another time it happened to me in the same bookstore um, a couple years earlier, right after I got saved in 1994, to where uh, I was walking the same Christian bookstore and there was a spinner rack with books. And it was all Kenneth Hagen Sr.'s books on the spinner rack. And I walked by and I saw this book and it just leaped out at me and it was like lights going on, flashes just in my spirit, my spiritual eyes, just, you know, uh, just all these bells and whistles, like I said, was going off. And this book was highlighted to me and it was by Kenneth Hagin Sr. called How to Be Led by the Spirit of God. And I bought the book immediately and I know the Holy Spirit said, I want you to buy that book and read it. So I read it. It was a really good book. I, I Actually, um, it's one of his best books. I mean, honestly, uh, it's called How to Be Led by the Spirit of God. It will teach you about... Um, the inner witness, you know, how God will say to your spirit or or to your spouse's spirit, to both of you, and you'll get an inner witness and you'll hear from the Spirit of God. It teaches you how to uh, hear the voice of God, hear the Holy Spirit. So uh also teaches about how to be baptized in the Holy Spirit as well. So it's a very good book, uh, but that was a spiritual highlight. So that was a thing, you know. So uh, uh, at this Lexington barbecue event, uh, we actually had places that were highlighted and people. Uh, so like, uh, when we met up with brother William Lowe, uh, I was talking to him and he said he'd seen some of my videos and we're Facebook friends, but this is the very first meeting that I met with him face to face and his family came out. I just want to thank him for coming out. Him and his family, you know, his family stood there for like for three hours and uh, we, uh, as we went out and ministered, but I met William, and he's from Winston Salem, a uh, beloved brother in the Lord. And he, um, excuse me, he was saying to me that he'd been out and he hadn't seen too many like results. He'd seen some, but not a whole lot. And you know, I just admonished him, encouraged him, you know, saying that Todd White spent like a long time praying for people over 500 people before you saw one person get healed and you don't give up you just keep doing it and then even after you you know i told him how you know when i first started also i just saw some pain go and things like that but as you keep doing it you're faithful and little god will make you ruler over much so you just got to keep doing it you know you got to keep going out there and keep praying for people and i was telling him how you know i've seen eyes open he said yeah i've seen the miracle cow videos and I, um, I said, but I haven't seen ears open up yet. And I've been wanting to see deaf ears open. And he encouraged me and said, brother, you will. And so uh, as we were just talking about that, there was um, at the festival, there were kiosks set up in the center of the street. You know, they had all the uh, streets blocked off for this festival. It was huge. Over 100,000 people showed up. So there was a lot of people, you know, traffic on each side of people just walking up and down the streets. So there were like a lot of kiosks set up in the center of the street. And as we're, we're talking about, you know, the deaf getting their hearing back, there's like a kiosk stand there that was for deaf people. And it was, it was some kind of company to help out deaf people. I can't remember if it's for insurance purposes or what. But um, we stood by there a little while hoping to see like maybe a deaf person come up, you know. But we uh, that didn't happen. But as we further walked down... Uh, there was another kiosk, and uh, William felt led to go to that one, and there was like, uh, it was for those magnetic braces, and they boast that takes the pain out of your body and all, and there was a whole lot of people there standing there, so I was like, that's a great idea, William, let's let's go there and stand there for a while, and um, we didn't see really any results with that, I mean, people were like shopping, and they didn't really be bothered, and one man left, finally, I waited about 10 minutes, and finally one man left the table, and I asked if I could pray for him and if he had any pain in his body. He said he had pain in his ankle, but he said, thank you, but uh, no, I don't, I don't need any prayers. So, uh, so we didn't give up. You know, We were striving in the beginning. The first hour, it, it was a lot of striving. Uh, so as we kept going uh, down the street, uh, there was a place that was highlighted to William. And it was a store, an old store there called the bee's knees and um it actually said on one side of the building bees and on the other side of the building it said knees and uh william said dave i'll be back in a minute and so we stood there and waited for him he walked over and there's two ladies standing directly underneath the sign that said knees on the storefront and he felt led to go to these ladies and he asked both of them he said do any of you have pain in your knees 
And the lady, one lady said, yes, I do. And she said she was a hairdresser and she stands for hours as they do, you know, cutting hair. And she said she had pain in both of her knees. I think it was like a level three pain. So uh, William prayed for her and all the pain left her knees and praise God. And got a picture of that. I'll show you after this video here. And um, that was one of the things happened that was very unique. And, and that's a spiritual highlight. You know, William... Uh, by the Holy Spirit was uh, led by the Spirit of God. He was, he, you know, the Spirit of God highlighted that place and it said knees. And it just so happened a lady was standing there with pain in her knees and God healed her, you know. So um, that's the awesome thing of God, you know. He's full of surprises and he, I believe he has an awesome sense of humor. And uh, we also saw things, you know, as soon as we got there, me and Frank Carpenter, uh, Frank, brother Frank, you know, we got out of the car, he drove up, and um, we got out of his car, and as soon as we got out, I saw a lady walking with a cane, an elderly woman, and she had knee problems, and um, uh, I said, Frank, there's a lady right over there, so we walked over to there, and Frank laid hands on her knee and prayed two times, and the pain left her body, and uh, there was another man that inside the festival that I prayed for, he had rotator cuff surgery, uh, he had his arm in a sling and his special cast, and I recognized the cast in the sling, and I said, you've had rotator cuff surgery, haven't you? And he was like, yes, I have. And so I prayed for him three or four times, and all the pain left his arm. And uh, also, um, the video you're about to see, uh, we we felt led, after a first hour, we felt like we were striving. You know, we're, we're going up to people, chasing them down, and trying to ask them if they wanted a prayer. And uh, I was pretty exhausted. You, you'll see on the video how exhausted I was. I'd worked... A 12-hour day the day before, I was supposed to just work a short day, but it turned out to be a real long day, so I was very tired. But I wanted to be faithful and go out and do this event, and so um, it, it really paid off. I mean, we we saw a lot of miracles happen, and uh, but we felt led to go, um, instead of chasing down people, we went to one of the three places where they serve barbecue, you know, pulled pork sandwiches, and um I said, hey, you know, let's let's just go down and let people come to us, you know, because that's what, you know, Jesus did sometimes to John the Baptist, you know, I mean, people came to them, so, um, and we just felt like the Holy Spirit, I just felt God correcting me and saying, you know, hey, you know, trust in me, you know, we were trying to make things happen, getting a cart before the horses, so to speak, so we stood out in front of the uh, pulled pork place, and sure enough, you know, people with wheelchairs and canes came walking up to us, and there was a man uh, by the name of Charles, him and his wife, and he had had a stroke two and a half years ago. And God was already healing him of the stroke, but he had had major knee surgery in both his knees. Three surgeries to the left of his knee, his left knee, and two on his right knee. So he's in a lot of pain. And I got to pray for him, and the pain left his knees, especially the left knee. And uh, he was totally healed of that. And this, his wife actually gives an awesome testimony uh, about how... Uh, through that process of taking care of her husband who had the stroke, which that's a very hard thing to do and to put on any wife, you know, when, when her uh, spouse goes through something like that. But God taught her, you know, showed her things through this storm, you know, about her marriage. And it actually made her, her marriage stronger. So it's a very beautiful testimony about that. And so, uh, and while she was finishing up her testimony on this video, uh, this one man walks by me. And I'm still staying with the man in a wheelchair. I was busy with him, still praying for him. This man walked by uh, who had his arm, his right arm in a white sling, just a, just like a, a cotton-type sling, nothing fancy. And uh, I look at Frank and William, and I just nod. And I look at that man, I nod to them, and they, and they both go over, walk over, and pray for him. And he was a pastor, and a pastor of a church. And he, he had injured his arm, um, I believe Frank Carpenter said from washing his dog. <laughs> so so uh, they both prayed for him and he got wonderfully healed. He actually pulled his arm out of his sling and started raising it up way over his head and there was no pain. So uh, just praise God. Uh, just want to encourage you all. Uh, the wildfire event was awesome. Lord willing, I want to do this next year. And, um, you know, God just... Just use the three of us. You know, the Bible says a single fold cord is better than, I'm sorry, a single fold cord can be easily broken, but a two fold cord is hard to break. And it also says that uh, one can put a thousand to flight 
and two can put 10,000 aflight. So what can three do? Put 100,000 aflight. And that's about how many people they said attends this festival every year. So God um, put there who he wanted to be there. So I, you know, I invited over 500 people, but I would love to see you all come out next year. It was definitely worth going to. And we had an awesome time in the Lord. And um, so Lord willing, we'll do wildfire event number two in Lexington, North Carolina in October in 2018, Lord willing. So God bless you. Enjoy this video. The first pic you're going to see is the lady that got healed, the hairdresser at the bee's knees, and after that's the video. God bless you all. You have a great week. Hope to see you all soon. Praise God. Praise the Lord, uh, here at the Lexington Barbecue Festival, and uh, Frank and William, we just uh, met Charles here in a wheelchair, and he had had a stroke, and he had major pain in his body, and we prayed for him, and um, and he's now healed, all the pain is, is gone out of his body, so uh, him and his wife are here right now at the, at the Lexington Barbecue Festival, and uh, prayed for him, you know, for neurons to be made whole in his, his brain, as well as the pain to go out of his body and the pain has now left him. So I uh, just want to show you right now, I'll flip the camera over here. So William, is the pain gone, brother? William, is God touching you? Is the pain gone? Yes. And it was in your knee, right? Yeah. And, um, and you had pain in just a leg, or was it all over your body? All over your knee. Yeah. And, um, so this is his wife right here. And she's been taking care of him, and had this a few years ago happen to him in stroke. So, um, but she said how God is like restoring him and healing him. And uh, it's not an accident. We met up with him today, but you know, um, he's like crying right now. He's touched, he's touched by how God's touching him, and uh, that's what we're here for. You know, the body of Christ to bring healing to people, and uh, it's showing God, it's showing people God that God really loves them. You know, so uh, we just praise God, thank God for what He's doing here today. And, uh, right. I'm keeping it in my pocket. I'm good. So how long ago did he have this? Can you tell a story real quick? Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, that's what I was actually telling the day of his stroke. Yeah. And so um, we went to the house. It was about 4 in the morning by the time we got there. Uh, no, before then. It was 4 in the morning that he woke up and said he was having a uh, headache. And I went to uh, look for get his medicine bag to give him his um for his headache, whatever. And then uh, as I came back I can see the you know his vomiting. Mm. And I didn't know that that was a sign of anything for this. And uh, so I'm thinking again he's fine but he's just vomiting. So then I go and get something to clean it up because he's vomiting and we at his brother's house and so I'm not you know gonna move mess. And then as he's standing there, I see the slur, which you know the slur is a stroke. Then that's when I started to get the medical um, help and everything. But I still believe that, that $600 was for the 29 days that I had to stay in Maryland. Right. In Maryland, because that, you know, that's what I used the whole time that I was there. Never in my money, you know, or anything right. like that. You said God's like healing him, right? I mean, like he's brought him right. so far, right? He was right? in 29 days in the ICU, and then they went. He went from there. Well, from the day that he went in, they told me to call the family. A hemorrhagic stroke. Um, I looked it up. They only last three days, um, and they're out. Check out. He's been here two, almost two and a half years. Um, he's walking. He can feed himself. He can bathe himself. And you know, so we're just. It's right now. It's just a memory. Like I said, I believe God is yeah, renewing, yes. Yes. transforming it. 
Yeah. Taking out all that old and crud. Right, yes. Yeah. And I mean, because he's doing a lot within me. Like, he's showing me how, you know, the things that you're doing that you didn't think you had time to do for your spouse. You know, like, get up and cook breakfast. You know, ask him how was his dad and do those things. I looked and he did. He always did. He always asked me how was my day when he picked me up from work. He always had a surprise for me. Whether it was a candy bar or a trip to New York and company or something. And so now I'm finding myself doing it. But it's like God speaks to me every so often to let me know these are the things that we did when we met, when you got married for the first year, but then you threw it away because he's here. You don't do that. You keep doing these things. And so um, I get up every morning. 